Good evening and welcome to the channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. According to unofficial statistics, Russia's military death toll in Ukraine has now passed the 50,000 mark. In the second 12 months on the front line, as Moscow pushed its so-called meat grinder strategy, it found the body count was nearly 25 percent higher than in the first year. Media outlets, including Media Zone and volunteers, have been counting deaths since February 2022. New graves and cemeteries helped provide the names of many soldiers. More than 27,300 Russian soldiers died in the second year of combat, according to the findings, a reflection of how territorial gains have come at a huge human cost. The overall death toll of more than 50,000 is eight times higher than the only official public acknowledgement of fatality numbers ever given by Moscow in September 2022. Russia has declined to comment. Meanwhile, a Russian missile attack has killed 14 people in the city of Chernihiv in northern Ukraine. That's according to Ukrainian officials. Ukraine's interior minister said there were more than 60 injured in the attack, which hit an eight-story building in a densely populated area. Officials said three missiles had struck close to the center of the city. The attack came hours after reports of a Ukrainian strike on a Russian military airfield in occupied Crimea. The United States and European Union say they are looking at imposing further sanctions on Iran after its attack on Israel at the weekend. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has said she expected to take action in the coming days, while EU Foreign Policy Chief Joseph Borrell said the bloc was working on it. Israel has urged its allies to sanction Tehran's missile program. We don't preview our sanctions tools, but in discussions I've had, um, all options to disrupt terrorist financing uh, of Iran continue to be on the table. As I mentioned, since the start of the administration, um, our sanctions have targeted over 500 individuals and entities connected to terrorism and terrorist financing. Officials say Copenhagen's fire-ravaged former stock exchange, one of the Danish capital's most famous landmarks, must be restored to its former glory. The 400-year-old building was being renovated when the blaze erupted on Tuesday, destroying its iconic spire. In a joint statement, the city's mayor and district mayors said, we cannot do without the stock exchange, and Danish Chamber of Commerce director vowed that it would be rebuilt no matter what. The chamber, which currently occupies the building, described the scenes on Tuesday morning as a terrible sight. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has faced Sir Keir Starmer in the first Prime Minister's questions since the Easter recess, with Angela Rayner and Liz Truss featuring prominently in their Commons exchanges. The former Prime Minister Liz Truss has been busy in the news this week due to the publication of her new book, Ten Years to Save the West. This week, the Prime Minister was asked what he thought her greatest achievement was. <laughs> Well, Mr. Speaker, all I'd say is he uh, ought to spend a bit less time reading that book and a bit and a bit more and a bit more time reading the deputy leader's tax advice. Actor Hugh Grant has settled a privacy case against the publisher of The Sun newspaper, saying he could have faced a bill of up to £10 million even if he had won. The star was suing newsgroup newspapers, claiming journalists had used private investigators to tap his phone and even burgle his house. He said he did not want to accept the enormous sum of money he had been offered to settle, but that a trial was likely to prove very expensive. NGN denied the claims against it. And new figures show Japan seeing record tourist numbers, but other data, including a survey of business sentiment, painted a less encouraging picture for the country's economy. Among the cherry blossoms, business confidence at big Japanese manufacturers and service sector firms slid in April from the prior month, dragged down by cost of living pressures and shaky economic conditions in major market China. The yen's weakening to levels unseen since 1990 during the heyday of the asset inflated bubble is lifting the cost of imports in a blow to household consumption. However, the country is on course to achieve a government goal of topping the pre-pandemic figure of 32 million annual foreign visitors by 2025, with the January to March quarter seeing a record 8.56 million visitors. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel's studios in Lagos.